What are the different types of scoliosis? When a patient receives a diagnosis of scoliosis, that's normally not enough to tell you really what type of scoliosis they have. Saying somebody has scoliosis is, is very general because there's many different types of scoliosis and there's many different causes associated with scoliosis. Scoliosis, first of all, is a unnatural sideways spine curvature. And it's a forward, it's a front view curvature of the spine of either 10 degrees or greater. It normally has a rotational component. This rotational co component makes it a three-dimensional misalignment within the spine. And the Cobb angle measurement is the way we measure scoliosis needs to be 10 degrees or greater for it to qualify by a scoliosis. Now, a Cobb angle is actually a measurement that's taken during an x-ray. Uh, the best way to diagnose scoliosis is with actual physical x-rays. And these x-ray measurements are taken by lines um, drawn on the x-ray, either using software or actually pencils and protractors, if you're actually using an old, like an old type of film. And you're drawing angles from the most tilted vertebra on the top to the most tilted vertebra on the bottom. You're drawing 90 degree angles, and then you're actually measuring where these lines intersect to determine the severity of the case. If a person has a mild scoliosis, those curves are between 10 and 25 degrees. If they're moderate, they're between 25 and 40 degrees. And once they break 40 degrees, they're considered severe. Now, I also like to use a fourth category. I call it very severe. This is when we break 80 degrees. The biggest curve I've ever seen has been 155 degrees, and this was in a growing child. So curves, unfortunately, can get at very, very severe stages. When we look at different types of scoliosis, it's normally based on several different factors. The first thing is causation. What actually is the appropriate cause of scoliosis? Two is where they are in the, uh, the person's body, where they are, the curve location and pattern, how old the patient is, the age of the patient during diagnosis, and the severity. So there's many different factors associated with the causation or the type of scoliosis, and all these four factors are associated with the different treatment needs that the patient will need. Now, the most common type of scoliosis is something called idiopathic scoliosis. Now, idiopathic scoliosis is a big fancy way of saying unknown cause, and these types of scoliosis are not associated with any specific or single causative factor. This accounts for about 80% of all types of cases of scoliosis. And the most common uh, type is something called adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. So this means that the patient is an adolescent, they're in between 10 and 18 years of age, um, idiopathic causation, and they have scoliosis. Now, you could have idio adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, and you could have any type of severity, mild, moderate, severe, or super severe. So but the most common type is going to be this adolescent we call AIS, or adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. However, there are cases of scoliosis that actually have some known causes, and these additional types remain for the other 20% of diagnosed cases um, with scoliosis. Number one in this list is something we call neuromuscular scoliosis. Now, neuromuscular scoliosis is a scoliosis that develops as a result of a secondary complication to a larger neuromuscular condition, something like cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, Marfan syndrome, um, neuro, um, Eller Downer syndrome, neurofibromatosis. Normally, these neuromuscular scoliosis are a result of changes in connective tissue, either the connective tissue of the body becoming too laxed or too rigid or too stiff. And this rigidness or laxity can lead to causation. Also, in neuromuscular scoliosis, could be complications with the neuro with the central nerve system or the spinal cord itself. Something like, uh, like a tethered cord or a syrinx or something along those lines can lead to a scoliosis developing. Congenital scoliosis is another type, and this is develops in utero, and this is when there's a malformation to a spinal vertebra or a spinal bone itself. The spinal bone develops into, instead of developing into a full vertebra, develops into something called a hemivertebra. A hemivertebra is where the spine develops, the bone develops abnormally, normally into a wedge-shaped vertebra, and this wedge-shaped vertebra will cause a curve right at that size. A third type is something called degenerative scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is also known as de novo scoliosis, and this is scoliosis that typically develops in adults, and it's normally adults facing age-related spinal degeneration. Now, interesting is that we believe that this happens as an unresolved trauma earlier on in life, something small that led to some small spinal misalignment and was left uncorrected for years and years and years and years, and now we have um, age-related spinal degeneration 
but understand it's asymmetrical spinal degeneration and it's normally located to a very specific area. So I don't like using the word age-related because age-related assumes that your entire spine is aging at the same rate. Normally, we don't see that. We see very specific areas that are going through rapid degeneration compared to areas that are not. So it tells us that something is causing it. And we believe it's an unresolved trauma that happened years ago, small, small not to create a severe scoliosis but cause a misalignment. And that misalignment left uncorrected developed into a scoliosis, you know, 10, 15, 20 years later. And the last one is the greater version of that is severe traumatic scoliosis. You go through some severe trauma, causes some severe injury by either an accident, fall, and causes the curve to instantaneously start to develop a scoliosis from that moment on. And these tend to be very painful and tend to progress from that, that period of time. So these causations are a type. Where the curve is located is also a way of determining the type of scoliosis that you may have, meaning we know there's three main sections of the spine. We have the cervical area, we have the thoracic area, and we have the lumbar area, neck, mid-back, low back. Where the curve is located is a way of typing your type of scoliosis. You can have a cervical scoliosis, you can have a thoracic scoliosis, you can have one in between the two called thoracolumbar, and you can also have a lumbar scoliosis. Sometimes you can have more than one. You can have a lumbar and thoracic scoliosis, you can have a lumbar, thoracic, and cervical scoliosis, meaning three different curves or four different curves in different areas. And like I said, you can have curves in transitions or to expand more than one area, and you just combine those words like thoracal scoliosis, th I mean, sorry, like thoracal lumbar scoliosis, or a cervical thoracic scoliosis where it spans uh, more than one area. Scoliosis is, can be a very complex condition. It can be, there's many different types and it can be many different areas affected. So therefore saying somebody just has scoliosis isn't enough. You have to know the type, the area, the severity, the causation associated with it to really understand the best treatment option for that person. And in many cases, scoliosis patients are kind of grouped into too big of a category saying, I just have scoliosis, I need help as opposed to trying to figure out exactly what type of scoliosis they have and what would be the best treatment option for you. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we have treatment plans that are crafted for all types of scoliosis to address the causation and also to address the size because no matter what the cause of the scoliosis is, what ends up happening with almost every case of scoliosis is that it progresses to where now the scoliosis itself becomes its own problem. And now since scoliosis, the, call, the curvature starts becoming its own problem, it starts progressing on its own, you have to address the structural component while you're trying to address the rest of the person's problems, because if you don't address the structural component, the curve continues to progress. And this is what I mean, that we address the underlying cause, because now the cause is the curve progression. And if we don't redu reduce that, the patient continues to experience problems as a result of the curve. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.